What's the word, y'all? Today is December 15th. NBA nerds, I don't want to call it Christmas, but it's something similar because a portion of the NBA community becomes trade eligible today. And like, we always looking, looking for trades. We always hype this day up. And I don't even remember the last time we actually got a trade on this day. It's always a bunch of rumors. And, and today we reacted to an article from Bleach Report that is one new trade target for every single team since we're in the season of trading. Shout out to Zach Buckley and the Bleach Report team. Let's see what's going on. Starting off with the Atlanta Hawks. Bring the line right back. Jordan McLaughlin and Kyle Anderson. Um, another one of those articles that they don't give you the exact trade, which I guess is fine for this instance. Uh, these are just people or players that each team should go after. Uh, the Atlanta Hawks, I, I don't even know exactly how to pinpoint what's going on in Atlanta right now. Obviously, there was the Trey Young, Nate McMillan thing from a few weeks ago. But they're so very beat up with DeJounte being out for a few weeks with an ankle sprain. You got... Uh, John Collins out with an injury. They're, they're running with such a small rotation slash young rotation that it's hard to even gauge what the heck they need slash what they should be working towards. I wonder how many teams are going to have Jay Crowder because he is the hot commodity, the hottest name that will probably be traded first. Boston Celtics, I, I understand getting some more front court depth because even right now uh, they're running a lot of Luke Cornett who has been okay and then Blake Griffin who has been fine. But obviously if you can upgrade those with those minutes to Yaka Pirtle, that would be amazing to have Yaka Pirtle basically as a backup with Robert Williams come back, which feels crazy because Pirtle is good enough to start in this league. But you also be doing a rental because if he is coming off the bench, I'm assuming him and his age are going to be like, hey, there's got to be a team out there that want to give us starter minutes and starter opportunities because I've been so very decent. Um, so you're probably paying for a complete rental. Mo Bamba signed, I think, a two-year deal with the Orlando Magic. And I think he'll be a lot easier to get than Yaka Pirtle. And Busy, Bismack Biombo, uh feels pretty cool as a staple backup in Phoenix. But I guess they got Jacques Landale over there. Um, again, another really fun name to say. So maybe they'd be willing to part ways with Busy. But I, I completely understand the, the world to try to get more front court depth because, yeah, they kind of need it. The Brooklyn Nets is one of the most interesting teams out there right now when it comes to trade assets because they have, like, decent-sized contracts. And, of course, they gave up a bunch of picks and some swaps to make the James Harden thing happen. But then they also received some with the Ben Simmons trade. So, like, they could potentially do a trade for John Collins. And, and people be like, oh, snap, here go that fourth piece or whatever you, you, you want to say. Uh, Mo Bamba, another guy, and Jay Crowder. I would love them to go out there and get a guy that can, you know, play some heavy center minutes and also rebound the ball. That's been one thing I've harped on a lot this season with the Brooklyn Nets is that as good as Nicholas Claxton is, he's not a possession finisher, as in, like, he's not a guy that's going to go ahead and gobble up a bunch of rebounds when, a, when the possession's over. And I think they need that because I think their defense goes up pretty significantly if they get rid of second-chance points and offensive rebound opportunities. John Collins, a decent rebounder. I'm curious to see what John Collins ends up. It feels like this is the year for him, and I'm, I'm assuming that he's going to be on a couple teams' different radars in this video. Also... Um, the, they ended up playing Dayron Sharp a few days ago in the, I think it was the Indiana Pacer game where everybody sat and Dayron Sharp had like nine offensive boards and it was beautiful, but he's still not there just yet. As you can see in this article, what Zach Buckley says, um, but you know, maybe something's there. Charlotte, go get draft picks. Yes. Yes. I can. This is one thing so far that I completely agree with the Charlotte Hornets should be selling to get draft picks. They should be selling to get the lowest value lottery pick in the last, I don't even know how long. And James Wiseman, because I can see a world with LaMelo Ball and James Wiseman. LaMelo Ball helps James Wiseman look serviceable, something that we haven't seen so far in his career. And Mo Bamba, yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a center play, Mo Bamba's the guy. Shout out to Mason Plumley though, because Plumley has been really good for me um, when I bet his over. Uh, you feel what I'm saying? Chicago Bulls, they're saying P.J. Washington, J. Crowd, and Denny Abdia. That would be hilarious if we ended up with Denny, um, Denny Abdia, because I thought he was going to get drafted here fourth overall, and we ended up taking Patrick Williams. At this point, wouldn't even matter either way. <laughs> it wouldn't even matter either way. But they're saying, um, just go get another big wing slash forward spot. I can't I can't tell you what the hell is going on in Chicago's front office in their mind. Should they be buying? Should they be selling? Whatever. I just, I'm, ugh, you know. Cleveland Cavaliers, Jay Crowder, Joe Harris, and Kenrich Williams. All three people that could run some three, could run some four. Um, could help with that position. Joe Harris obviously adds some three-point versatility, something they, they could use definitely because they have such a good defense with the back end being so elite that they can afford to slide Joe Harris to the lineup with him being a average to below average defender and still be okay. And Kenny Hustle 
is one of my favorite role players in basketball but everything i've read about him and potential trade talks it seems like okc really really loves him um even if he doesn't fit the timeline he's part of their culture setter over there so i don't know if he'll actually get moved uh but all three solid candidates for the cavaliers move on to the dallas mavericks yeah go spend I know you ain't got a ton to spin, but whatever you can do, go spin. I've been saying for some time that Zach Levine would be the perfect pairing mate for Luka Doncic on the offensive side of the ball. I, I don't know what the defense would look like, uh, but Jason Kidd has been a good defensive coach for the few years that he's been a part of the Dallas Mavericks. OG Ananobi, potential defensive player of your candidate. I don't know how you pry him away from the Toronto Raptors. I'm guessing they're assuming that if the Raptors continue to do this little spin downward, that they'd be willing to sell a little bit. And John Collins, change the scenery for John Collins could be dope. Actually, John Collins with Luka Doncic could be pretty cool as well. I like all three of these candidates. I don't know how realistic two of them are, um, considering the Bulls don't know what the hell they're doing. And then OG is really good. But, like, Jock Hollis is something you could potentially put together. Dallas is in a weird spot, though, because I don't know what picks of their own they have to trade because they've done some trades that dealt with picks, and I don't know what the protections are or whatever. Denver Nuggets. Oh, I can't see. I can see the archetype. They want high-energy defensive players. Javante Green, Matisse Steibel, and Josh Richardson. Um, Vontae, you know, if we were to decide to blow it up, I would, I would hate to see him go because he brings so much energy and he's so fun to watch. But yeah, the problem is a 28th ranked defense and they're flawed and these two guys can help on the perimeter. I mean, all three of these guys can help on the perimeter, get some more stops. So, um, and I think that some of these dudes trade value is probably pretty low. So you might be able to pry them away. Detroit draft picks, Johnny Davis. Yo, if you, if, if you're still in Johnny Davis two months into his NBA career as a top, was he top 10 pick, right? Was he the 10th overall pick? Would be crazy ridiculous for the Washington Wizards. Just let, just let you know that they drafted the wrong dude. Now, I ain't watched Johnny Davis a lot this season. The man been playing for Capital City, whatever, G League team, because he ain't he wasn't ready when they drafted him. And a, a few people after him look ready, at least to contribute right now. Um, so you could pry him away. That I mean, I would assume that the Washington wouldn't be willing to trade him away for that specific reason. Like, dang, we just used a, a lottery pick on this dude, and we saying that he ain't ready enough to even get minutes on a bad team? Because let's be honest, the Washington Wizards are on an eight-game, let's say, eight losing streak, and they still ain't even give Jolly Davis an opportunity. That's that's showcasing them as far as management and Johnny Davis as far as production so far. But, yeah, go get first-round picks for, um, for our guy Bogey. Next, yep, bring on the center play. Um, I, I've said this for a while. I think a lot of people realize that Yaka Pertle would be a really, really good center for the uh, for the Golden State Warriors. I would also add Mason Plumlee because Mason Plumlee is going to be cheaper than Jakob. And both of them have the playmaking vision that you want in the Warriors system from the center position. And of course, they are bigger bodies than Kevon Looney, who's been great, who has been great. But I think they could use a big old body on that bench and that roster. And the, this guy does it. PJ Washington will be part of the James Wiseman trade or whatever it might be. Um, PJ adds you know, another versatile guy that can play some four and a five. Eric Gordon adds three-point shooting outside of Stephen Clay, which is something they've been needing. Houston Rockets, go get draft picks. Jackson Hayes, a guy that if I am a rebuilding team, if I'm the Charlotte Hornets, if I'm the Houston Rockets, Detroit, Detroit has a really solid young front court with Isaiah Stewart and uh, Jalen Duran, so maybe they are interested. But if I have some holes in my front court and I'm a rebuilding team. Jackson Hayes is the guy I would take a chance on because last season when he started with the Pelicans one of their big runs end up making the playoffs. He was starting at the four and obviously he couldn't play much come playoff time, but he looked really solid. And so far this season, he's he's completely out of the rotation as they decide to, to really go in on the all winning stuff. His, his trade value is probably extremely low at this point. So yeah, I would be willing to take a chance on Jackson Hayes and then RJ Hampton too. So the Pistons said they're looking for an unprotected first round pick for Sadiq Bey. So I don't think the Indiana Pacers will be willing to give that up for him. Um, Moses Moody and Cam Reddish are also guys um, in this hypothetical. They're probably getting rid of either uh, Buddy or Miles or whatever to make it make it happen. Speaking of Miles, the Clippers have him here. Eric Gordon and, uh, and Alec Burks. The Clippers said to the world that, hey, we're trying to get somebody that can run some center against the teams that go small, um, which is interesting because they have a bunch of bodies that are fours that have played some five, like Robert Covington has played some five in his career. You've seen Marcus Morris close out games at five in their in his career, but they're looking for uh, like actual bigs that can, you know, hang and, and do okay against some small ball teams. And I think Miles can potentially do that. Um, and then some other dudes around them. The Lakers, DeMar DeRozan. Bojan Bogdanovic and Buddy Hill. Now, actually, as I'm recording this video, I got an update from Bleach Report that said Russ unlikely to be traded with his good play 
Um, they, they don't see a world where he's getting traded. So in order to get DeMar DeRozan, you would have to trade uh, Russell Westbrook for contract reasons. I think. Actually, the more I think about it, you have you have a couple different. Kendrick Nunn is like $5 million a year. Patrick Beverly is like $12 million a year. That's like 17 ish million. DeMar DeRozan is making. So, no, you would most likely have to throw in Russell Westbrook for contractual reasons if they were going out there to get DeMar DeRozan. You don't have to say the same about Bojan Bogdanovic or Buddy, Buddy Hill's contract is like $22 million too. So, um, in order to make a few of these trades happen, you have to get rid of Russell Westbrook. And the way he's been playing recently, they decided that they don't really want to. Um, but, you know, the, the big trade that's been going around NBA Twitter over the last couple weeks is like DeMar Vucevic for Russell Westbrook, Patrick Beverly, and those two first-round picks. Don't ask me my opinion, all right? Don't ask me, because I don't have one. The Memphis Grizzlies, OG Ananobi would be a perfect person. And, and the good thing about the Grizzlies is they have all of their own first-round picks. They've been doing it through the draft every single season. OG adds another element to the Memphis Grizzlies that can put them over the top. That's just if the Toronto Raptors are deciding to sell. And that's a big if because it's not really in their DNA to, to really be sellers. You know, Mas Masai has been really good at his job for that reason alone. Even in the years that they were bad, they weren't sellers. They just took that step back year, drafted Scotty Barnes, and then they were right back into the playoffs. Um, so I, I think this will really be contingent of OG Ananobi really thinks that he needs a new change of scenery. There were some rumors about that last season. They got shut down by Scotty Barnes and all these people. But OG... They would be great. I mean, it might even be as simple as, as Dylan Brooks. I don't know. One of the people that you drafted this season, Jake LaRabia, Jake LaRabia, uh, uh, Roddy, or, or Lofton, and then a pick. Unprotected. Maybe a one unprotected, one swap or something. If the the or the, uh, the Raptors are willing to sell, Jake Crowder, bring him back. You know, when he was there, they looked really good. He even hit a game winner for them in his little time there. And then Cam Reddish. Um, it's something I heard Chris Vernon um, who is a big Memphis Grizzly guy saying that, hey, we want, we would love to have Reddish on this roster. So uh, maybe they could get the most out of him because they do a great job of maximizing the potential of guys. Next, we have the Miami Heat. Josh Richardson, Jay Crowder, Sadiq Bay. None of these guys turning Heat season around, so I'm disappointed that it's not some bigger names. But they don't really have the access to go get bigger names. So I understand why they don't have some superstar caliber player on the Miami Heat radar. I think they do have one pick to trade potentially. Um, so, hey, if the Pistons say they want a pick, are you ready to give a pick for Sadiq Bay? Sure. The Bucks, um, just some bits, more bits production. So I like the idea of having these three guys. Jay Crowd has been linked with the Bucks for for forever at this point, so it makes sense that uh, they will potentially want him. Jordan Clark's an absolute bucket. Eric Gordon is a great shooter, and he low key. I feel like if he got traded to the Bucks, he would look good in the Bucks jersey based on nothing. Next, the Minnesota Timberwolves again contingent on if the Raptors decide to sell. Actually. I think a Gary Trent Jr. trade is more likely, even if they're not selling, um, with this being the last year of his contract. And he's been looking all right. You know, even there were some rumors about them being unhappy with his bench production or his uh, his defensive production. Even though he's a steals guy, he's not necessarily a stay in front of my dude and, you know, don't get back door guy. Um, so it would make sense for them to potentially move on for him. How the heck do you get him to Minnesota? I, I don't really know the answer to that question. Uh, but Joshua said Kelly, Kelly Oubre, another guy that should be on the move this season. Uh, I don't really remember what his contract looked like, but I think it's more likely that he gets moved to Minnesota than Gary Trent Jr. Mo Bamba, Doug McDermott, Nerlens Noel. Huh. Okay, they're probably looking at it as like, hey, uh, even though Mo Bamba probably would never really close out games, we can have lineups where he's at the five and Z's at the four, and now the, the spacing is great. But the Z and Larry Nance Jr. minutes are like some of the best in basketball. So I look key am not a I am surprised um, that there's not bigger names here because they have all of those first round picks. I don't know if I would make a big trade if I'm the Pelicans because things have looked so good. But I'm surprised that we don't have at least one decent sized name over here. Instead, we have three players that will play minimal minutes come a playoff series. This is funny because me and my guys are just talking about Kyle Kuzma potentially being on the Knicks. Based on no rumors at all, we just saw Kyle Kuzma and thought he looks like a Nick. He already he already said that he wanted to go to a bigger market, making 20 plus million a year. Obviously the Knicks are a big market. Um, and, and if they are, if the Washington Wizards are selling, which again, something they haven't done much in the history of their organization, if they are selling, the Knicks have a lot of draft capital and they have some contracts in Ever Fournier that can make this happen in a split second. And uh, it will be interesting to see him in a New York Knicks jersey. He's having a good season so far. OKC, Cam Reddish, James Wiseman, and Patrick Baldwin Jr. I would love a Cam Reddish um, thing. And I think there's a rumor about them wanting like either a young player or two second round picks. 
Hello, we're the OKC Thunder. We have 47 second round picks. That's an easy deal for me. I would be the, the last stop of Cam Reddish. You know what I'm saying? He, he already had a couple different places. This feels like a place where we believe that we can get him to go. And if they could, I mean, watch out, Lee. Orlando Magic, uh, another team that could be buyers of a Moses Moody, Sadiq Bay, and Draft Capital. Okay, can't really say much about this. Um, the Orlando Magic should always be looking at this last thing right here to get that Draft Capital. The Philadelphia 76ers... I didn't really think about them as a Jay Crowder destination, but yeah, I mean, what what would it would have to be a three team I would assume because what would they be giving up that the Suns would be willing to take on for Jay Crowder? I don't know, uh, but I didn't really think about him as that place, and I can see it now that it's in front of me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, next we have the Phoenix Suns. Yep, they need a name something like this. I believe I don't I don't even know if John Collins makes them a, content, a real contender or Kyle Kuz make them a real contender, but to put them in a better position that they're in right now, um, just another guy that can score if you need him to. Also, at least solid defenders at that four position. They just need some type of production from that position right now. And Torrey Craig has been all right, but obviously Torrey Craig ain't getting the job done. Uh, the Portland Trailblazers, OG, OG is the most talked about name, by the way. Him and him and Jay Crowder. Where you at, Jay? Him and Jay Crowder, and I guess John Collins, too. Um, OG Ananobi for the Portland Trailblazers. Him, oh, him, Jeremy Grant. And the, how the heck do you make that happen? Uh, also, Cam Radish, Mobamba. So, yeah, we're recycling some names. That is a new one. Oh, snap. The crazy thing about all of this is that I saw some, some uh, Sacramento King fans actually send me photoshops of him in the King's jersey. And I was like, eh, you know, what, the likelihood of it is really low, so who cared? I mean... He would add another element, put him back in his original position at the four position. I just don't know how you get there. It, it's like, what do we have now? Because I could be mistaken here, Kings fans. Let me know in the comment section. But when you made that trade for Kevin Herter, you traded a pick that made it so that the two picks before and after are untradeable I've, because of the stifen rule. So how the heck do you get Pascal Siakam there? I don't really know. But if, again, if... If the Toronto Raptors are selling, the, the Sacramento Kings would be one of the top destinations for me as a guy that likes watching the Kings and like Pascal Siakam. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that would be ridiculous. Um, is there? Do they give you a? Uh, uh, do, 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 do. They don't really give you the layout for it. The question, of course, in trade conversation, and things could be sticky if the trade would demand the inclusion of Keegan Murray, this year's fourth overall pick. Still, Sacramento could potentially cobble together an interesting package with or without him and deem at least one of those players a big no okay okay would you be willing sacramento let me know would you be willing because i don't know the answer to that pascal's under contract for a good amount of time what is he 28 years old 29 years old at this point he he has only got better every single season if you don't know would you be willing to throw that fourth overall pick in there probably right this is sacramento keegan murray's good but how do we think that the ceiling of Keegan Murray will match the production that we have, we could get right now with Pascal? Those are the type of conversations you need to have. But I don't know the answer to it. No, no, not P. Willie. <laughs> not P. Willie. Okay, yeah, go get draft picks. I'm not having a conversation about that. Okay, beyond draft picks, the Spurs could be looking to score on young talent. If the Bulls grow impatient and seek more plug and play help, they could pry, yeah, put Williams up for grabs. Yeah, oh, man. Uh, Toronto Raptors, Miles Turner, Yaka Pirtle. Um, yeah, get, get some center production for sure. Christian Coloco is a young second round pick. He's just ain't ready just yet to be getting like starting minutes on the playoff team, which is fine. This is the first year of his NBA career as a second rounder. So go and prove that. Go and prove that. Um, Utah Jazz, Peyton Pritchard, Jackson Hayes, and Nikola Jovic. All right. Um, Washington Wizards. Yo, if the if the Wizards make a trade to go get DeMar DeRozan, I would be laughing hysterically. Hysterically. Um, and Alex Caruso, by the way. Um, is it possible that Washington's, Washington's quarter billion dollar commitment to Bradley Beal this summer committed the franchise to life to, of a lifetime mediocrity? We made a video about that on this channel. But that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. The Wizards have been plenty formidable, formidable when they've had Bill, Kuzma, and Chris Stops together posting and yada, yada, yada. Added another shot creator like DeRozan could, re could really open up this attack. <sighs> How, though? How? Show me the trade. Then we can talk. Show me the trade. Then we can talk. Okay. Well, um, that, that, what is this one? Kyle Kuzma, rumors, Kuzma's future. Why? Okay. 
All eyes on the Bulls. Oh, okay. Everybody's watching the Bulls. Poorly constructed. It needs to blow it up, as we know. This is from six days ago. It's not really relevant anymore. Let me know what team or what players you want your scene to, to look after. I'll be in the comment section as always.